Tell us a little bit, Mitch, if you can. Yes. Joel Weider, man. I mean, you're talking oh. about a guy who, who basically changed the fitness industry. He did. You have to give him a lot of credit. He started the Mr. Olympia contest. Mm -hmm. He got all these guys revved up for a top uh, professional bodybuilding show. Mr. Weider, I know him personally. He's a very kind man. Mm -hmm. People mistake him as a, the other way, but he's not. He's a very kind man. I've known him for years, and we've been good friends for years. And he's the type of guy that does things without being asked. In other words, on from his own side, he helps his, a lot of these bodybuilders are past their prime. He hires them and then pays them wages. You see? He's that type of a person. But a lot of people misunderstand him. But I, I, I really like Joe Weed. He's done a lot. And his beautiful wife, uh, Betty, very nice people. Yeah, I've had the pleasure of knowing him for years. And uh, the wonderful people. And you've been as guest at Olympia for a lot of years. Well, yeah, I uh, I judged two Mr. Olympias, and uh, I tell you something, Arnold Classic. Now I don't know if I should say this or not, but Arnold Classic has more entertainment, more events right now. And now he's he's I think he's got three or four different places where they have these boxing, wrestling, all kinds of physical things. You see, and uh, it's like a great big circus, you know. Got, and uh, uh, he's got all the. Last year he had 160,000 people going to the uh, turnstile. 160,000 people. And you've been at the Arnold Classic forever, yeah? Well, we've been there uh, just the two years that I had my hip replacement, and then this year when my wife was very ill, I uh, didn't go. But I'm planning to go next year because Mr. Jim Lorimer, who is a partner with Arnold, uh, he and I were the first two to walk down the aisle when Arnold got married. He's six feet tall. I'm down here, a shrimp. Everybody, everybody <laughs> well, looking. That was a mutton jump thing too. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, well, you know, Senator Kenny was looking at. Him, he was laughing and smiling. <laughs> I didn't think anything funny. Just because I'm short, but. <laughs> you made Senator uh, Kennedy yeah. laugh, so that had to yeah. be good. Yeah. And another thing, I had the great pleasure of meeting Mrs. Jackie Onassis, oh, one of the most classiest lady I've ever met. Okay. You know, we were, we had this engagement luncheon, I mean marriage luncheon at the uh, President John Kennedy's summer house with uh, Jack Onassis. And there was a lady standing in the front door to the entrance, and she didn't know none of us, none of us. She went to each one of us, said, thank you for coming, welcome to Hyannisport, or welcome to the wedding. And, oh, I was really struck with that. And then I asked her to take a picture, you know? And uh, <laughs> I said, uh, Mr. Onassis, would you mind taking, oh, of course not, you know? So humble. Here's a multi-minute lady, she could be snobbish. She never was snobbish, always friendly to everybody. And she went to each person, we were having uh, lunch, and went to each one of us and told us, welcome to Highlands World, welcome to Now, who would do that, you know? Very humble person. And she's, hey, you look at her in person, she's beautiful. You look at the, uh, the picture, you know, like uh, at the wedding, uh, Barbara Walters and Andy Williams sat next to our table. And the uh, funny thing happened was, uh, uh, Dot and I were going to dance, but they had, they were, it was on the lawn and they had these folding chairs, so the folding chairs stuck into the grass and my wife fell over. Well, that Andy Williams, boy, he must have won the 100 yard dash someplace in Olympia or something because he was there before I could even get off my seat. You pick up my wife, you know? And uh, he, she met him in a hotel and he remembered. And uh, when he comes to Hawaii, he always hangs around with the local kids, yeah. And, uh, uh, I was surprised how beautiful Barbara Walters was in person. I told beautiful her, lady. yeah, I said, Mrs. Walters, I said, you look a hell of a bit in person than you do on TV. <laughs> and she was all well, smiles. I'm sure Barbara Walters wanted to hear that one. Oh, she was all smiles. She yeah. had a great big Easter hat on. And she's really pretty. Yeah, I couldn't believe it was her, you know. The, Jesus Christ. You know, I thought <laughs> you had to my, check the glasses. I thought, yeah, I thought, my, sure yeah I thought my glasses were off, you <laughs> know. But she's tomorrow. a beautiful lady and a nice lady. And they just, they're quiet, you know, they don't, they're not boisterous, you know, you know, they don't go show and say, well, I'm Barbara Walters, she's not like that. And uh, so uh, I really respect her for that. And Andy Williams is always a nice guy. Small guy, you know, but oh, boy, that guy has speed, man. He went and picked up my wife before <laughs> I even got off my chair, he was over there picking her up, you know. <laughs> Where the hell did you get he all that? had his feet? eye on Dot for a while, Mitch. I mean, you know. <laughs> oh, wow. <well. laughs> you can't blame her. She's a beautiful lady. Well, oh, yeah, lady. but uh, hands off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you Mitch, know? I'll tell you what. When yeah. you were younger, did you ever, ever even think or fathom that your life would be to the point where you're going to meet and run into a Jackie Onassis, a, a Barbara Walters, an Andy Williams, and all these people, yeah, well, Arnold? Yeah. Well, you I know. I mean, to think that you're a link between all of them. Yeah, well, I think Arnold's a link to everything because all the people I've met that I mentioned and you mentioned, all through Arnold's connection. 
And uh, when he asked me to be an usher, I refused. I figured I'd be the only Oriental there, see? And it's not good to be a foreigner in a different country. <laughs> but you know what I mean. But anyway, uh, he finally meets, you become an usher. I said, okay, okay, okay. When he said that, he sounded like Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> so I, go like, I, I went like this. Yeah, yeah I went like okay. this. I said, okay, I hire yeah. Hitler, hire Hitler. And he said, oh, oh. So he laughed. But, you know, Arnold's got a good sense of humor. He laughs at everything. Right. Yeah. Sure. And uh, that's how he got along so far because the guy is, is his own man. He makes his own decision. You know, this should change and amend the Constitution whereby a foreign born person that's an American citizen, he's been an American citizen for over 20 years now, should be allowed to run for presidency. Don't you think that's true? Well, okay. I, have to, I have to say yes, because Mitz has been killing me on this issue for a long time. <laughs> yeah. I guess we kind of let the cat out of the bag. I mean, a few years back, it's been quite a, year, a few years back now, about five years ago, Mitz had talked to me about Arnold, and Ar of course Arnold's goal is to become president of the United States. I don't think that's a big secret to a lot of people out there in America and across the world right now. So, and of course, that's why Mitz you know, has a little personal interest in that as well. So, and I can understand that, because you feel like Arnold would become a good president. Oh, he would become a darn good one. In fact, if you clean out the Congress, it will have some clean people in there. Once <laughs> You'll throw them all out. Oh, I'll throw them all out, because they keep bushing this long. There's something wrong with the Congress. They should have impeached him a long time ago. <laughs> Am I allowed that, to say that? That was on film. Yeah, you better take Maybe it off. I think the Secret Service is going to come to yeah, the outside. Yeah, uh, yeah. I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell him I said it, but don't say nothing about it. Just keep quiet. But we'll keep no, quiet. I'm not the only one that feels that way. You know, mm -hmm. this country has really, it's a trillion dollars in a hole because he wanted to get oil wells that Saddam Hussein had. Now, he got Saddam Hussein, but what happened to Osama bin Laden? He's the guy that created all the problems. They can't find him. Why? What is the reason? I think it's political. I really do. Yeah, it's too bad because... So many young kids, I hate to see these 18, 19 year olds go over there and get killed for no reason. There's no reason for this war, except greed, you know? So I, I, I really feel sorry for those kids. They didn't have a chance in life. 